We'll follow with our three remaining presenters who will uh, provide some insight uh, on the enforcement perspective, on the judicial perspective, and then the uh, trade perspective uh, as different aspects of uh, the enforcement and investigation of intellectual property rights and counterfeiting in particular. We're going to start with uh, Edward Tarver, Jr., who is a senior criminal investigator special agent with U.S. Department of Homeland Security, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, uh, group out of Houston, Texas. A former officer with the Louisiana State Police, Mr. Tarver joined Customs over 20 years ago and for the past 10 years has supervised special investigations focusing on IP rights. In particular, investigations involving criminal violations of customs fraud and intellectual property rights. In those 10 years, uh, his team has conducted the only two joint investigations ever in China and the only joint investigation to date with India. Uh, he conducts training around the world and has assisted governments uh, in South America and Africa in training customs and police officers in intellectual property investigations. And he's going to share some of those experiences with us. Good afternoon. Uh, Matt spoke earlier about my difficulties in Brazil. I've always suspected that uh, Matt slipped something in my drink to, uh, so he'd have a good story to tell uh, about me. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about today about uh, our agency, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and how we can uh, assist the industry in, in investigating uh, their complaints of uh, intellectual property, and also a little bit about what uh, the private industry can do to help make our job a little easier and get some of these uh, complaints done. Uh, before I get started, though, I want to talk a little bit about uh, our investigations. About 10 years ago, I was asked to, to form a special group that uh, investigated intellectual property crimes. We wanted to do a little bit differently, so what we decided to do was to um, uh, have some objectives. We decided not to uh, be bound by traditional uh, uh, boundaries. We wanted to go wherever we could go into the world and take out the, uh, the factories and the, uh, the people behind these crimes, irrespective of, of uh, national boundaries, and we've been pretty successful at it. We want to identify uh, and dismantle U.S. organizations importing counterfeit merchandise in the United States. We also want to identify and dismantle foreign organizations that manufacture the counterfeit goods and import them into the United States, detect and seize large shipments of counterfeit goods, improve targeting, and improve communication between ICE and CBP and FDA, as well as the private sector, and providing training. And one of the things that I think is a key is the communication and the partnerships between, uh, between private sector and uh, the government, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. But just a few investigative highlights. Uh, our operation's been responsible for about 98 arrests, $151 million in seizures. Uh, we conducted in 2003 the first ever uh, joint U.S.-China uh, investigation, which was dubbed Operation Spring involving counterfeit DVDs. We, we closed three factories, 11 people arrested, including U.S. citizens, seized a million dollars in cash. That was the first time that China ever allowed any foreign law enforcement onto its soil to conduct investigations. In 2005, we decided to try it again. We went back and did Operation Ocean Crossing. This time it involved counterfeit pharmaceuticals. We seized about $5 million of counterfeit pharmaceuticals, 13 arrests, four factories closed down in China. In 2006, we went to India and did the first ever undercover investigation involving counterfeit pharmaceuticals. So you can see uh, our formula is, is working. We've been able to go around the world and do things that no one else in the, uh, the world has ever done. Uh, why do we consider it a problem? Because uh, uh, a survey of, of industry represented rated IPR is the number one problem in the world. Matt gave a, a higher figure than this, but it, uh, uh, over $100 billion a year are impacted. And of course, health and safety issues. Most people can, uh, perception of IPR are luxury goods, but in reality, you'll see things like exploding batteries and some of these other things. Counterfeit electrical cords. This is from a case that we did in Houston and in New York, where uh, these goods are, are, are being counterfeited, they're substandard, and they actually uh, caught on fire. Okay, what does ICE need from a trademark holder to successfully investigate their complaints? Well, as I said earlier, partnerships are one of the more important things that we have out there. We need to have a partnership between ICE and CBP, which is Customs and Border Protection, which is the uniform guys that you see at the airports and seaports. They're our sister agency, and they actually invest, they uh, are 